And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and with regards to him, he is famous amidst us as the Mahdi. And this is part of the beliefs of the Ahlul Sunnah, that a person will come who will be from the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Rasul says, Al-Mahdiyu min itrati min waladi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my lineage, as in from my progeny, from the children of Fatima. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, his name will be my name. So his name will be Muhammad. And his father's name will be my father's name. So he will be Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and as the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. And this this righteous ruler Ali radiyallahu anhu says, and radiyallahu an Ali, Ali radiyallahu anhu says, Al Mahdi yuminna ahl al bayt. The Mahdi is from us, from the family of the Prophet. يُصْلِحُهُ اللَّهُ فِي لَيْلَةً Allah Rabbu Al-Izza will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi. And the Mahdi doesn't have the competencies of the Mahdi. Until one night. In one night Allah will transform him. The Ahadith mention that a king will die in the Jazeera. In the Arab Peninsula. And the sons or three sons of a king will fight and quarrel over leadership. And to avoid this quarrel, this man, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, will leave Medina in secret and go to Mecca. Because he doesn't want to be involved in the conflict nor does he want people to turn towards him. So when he goes to Mecca, his aim is to avoid getting tangled up in this leadership struggle. Yet people follow him from Medina into Mecca. And they find him and they take him out. And they bring him to the Kaaba. And there between the, the Rukn, as in Hajr al-Aswad, and Maqam Ibrahim, they will make bay'ah to him when he doesn't want it. You with me? That didn't sound very convincing. <laughs> so they will make bay'ah to him. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And he is asleep. And in his sleep he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. He's displaying what he's never displayed before. Discomfort and sleep to the extent that he's moving. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, strange is the situation an army will come from the from syria intending the house of allah from my ummah seeking a man from my progeny to attack him and in another hadith walafzul al-bukhari yaghzu jaysh al-ka'bah فَإِذَا جَاءُوا بِبَيْضَاءَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَخْصَفُوا بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ and An army will come campaigning towards the Kaaba until it reached the Bayda. And Bayda is an expanse of land between Mecca and Medina, a flat desert land. When it reaches there, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَخْصَفُوا بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ The earth will suck them in their first and their last. And in another call, one person or a couple of people will be left just to tell the tale. So this is one of the signs that this one is the one the Prophet ﷺ intended. First, that his name will be my name and 
his na the name of his father will be my father's name. Second, an army will come to attack him and he will be unarmed and the army will be destroyed by Allah alone. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. And the people that realize it, initially or the first batch that go towards him is from our lands, from Khurasan. The black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan. And the flags will come towards him. And they will traverse through the land until they come in help of the Mahdi. And his time is a difficult era. The Rasul says it in an eloquence befitting the majesty of the Rasul. Listen carefully, Muslims. تَخْزُونَ جَزِيرَةَ الْعَرَبِ فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ You will campaign in the Arab Peninsula and Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الْفَارِسِ Then there will be a campaign against the Persians. فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ and Allah will open it. ثُمَّ تَخْزُونَ الْرُومِ Then there will be a campaign against... Rome and Allah will open it. ثم تغزون الدجال فيفتحه الله. Then the Dajjal will come and Allah will open it as in will let you conquer it. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the Hadith says he will stay with you for seven years. And maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. And at the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition, will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge. 80 banners, 80 different flags, under each flag will be 14,000 men. Is it 14 or 12? 12,000 men. I've said 14. If they've got it wrong, that's their thing. But. And anyway, so between those two. And when the two sides meet, and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts. And the battle is hot in its intense. And a third of the Muslims will die. And a third will be victorious. Just a third will be victorious. And they will be there on the battlefield collecting the remnants. And the booty of war. And the hadith says, from one tribe, 99 have died and one person is left. So what joy will he have at victory and what joy will he have at collecting booty? So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, you would have expected issues to become more relaxed. Yet, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that, O oh Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your land.